Hi, good evening. Thank you for joining us this evening on her uh, small group uh, leadership training. Uh, coming to you from Scarborough Family Worship Center, Six Donalda Crescent. And I am Eloise Walters. Uh, we thank you for joining us and we pray and trust and hope that you're keeping safe and um, uh, we are praying for you. Hope you know that we're praying for each one, praying that the Lord will continue to bless us and give us favor in this time. Uh, still, we are waiting for the Lord's hand upon us as his people. He's doing a great thing. God is doing a great thing. And whatever it is, we just want to be patient, prayerful, and um, faithful to doing what the Lord has called us to do. So again, I want to thank the group leaders uh, uh, for their kindness and their prayers and so forth. And thank you for um, uh, sharing this time with us tonight again. I'm going to be praying before we uh, start this study. Father, we thank you again tonight. We give you praise and glory and honor. You are so great. And we magnify and lift up and worship your wonderful name. Lord, you have been good to us. And in spite, O oh God, of all that is happening around the world, you are still Lord of all. And you give us grace. You give strength. The Bible said you give power to the faint and to them that have no might, you increase their strength. And we thank you, Lord, for increased strength. We pray tonight your blessing upon this study and let the hearts of your people be encouraged. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. So um, we're continuing on the study that we left off, um, uh, leadership traits. And tonight we are going to speak about um, leadership traits and, and ethical living. Uh, so for the past two lessons, we have taught on the gift of the Spirit and the abilities God has given to each one. We also taught on developing leaders, leadership traits, leadership training, the importance of the study of the Word of God in the life of a leader. Uh, how to lead a small group and the importance of small groups in the church. In this time, we have seen the importance of small group, even in uh, while we're shut in, we can see how that small groups are working online. And I believe that this is going to play a great role throughout the church age as it had been in the early church. Uh, small groups are here to stay. So in the previous lesson, we defined what is the intent of a small group. That the intent of a small group is participating with Christ in building his ever-expanding kingdom in the hearts of individuals. Also in the life of the group, and through believers, and also into the world, through uh, discipleship and evangelism. So whatever we do, we are participating with Christ in helping to build his kingdom on earth. That's the whole intent. And the focus is and should be the same. It is all about Christ. There are many areas of leadership where uh, helps are needed. Uh, as we talk about small group, we're talking about uh, Sunday school, uh, children ministries, youth ministries, men's ministries, ladies ministries, pastoral uh, care groups, small group prayer cells, uh, groups that ministers to divorcees, um, Single ministries, choir ministries, codependency group, evangelism, and the list goes on. It's a very extensive uh, list. There are uh, many opportunities to serve in this area 
um, and God, as we minister to these um, different needs, we are helping to expand the kingdom of God on earth through discipling God's people. So again, there's a place for all who the Lord has called. There is no one uh, that is immune from helping in these areas. As long as you are uh, um, called to serve, you are serving in some area, and uh, it could be any of these ministries and more. So may the Lord help you that as you uh, ponder in your heart where you really want to, to uh, help in the work of the Lord, um, whether you're a leader or, uh, you know, a member of the church, there is a place for each one. So this evening we are continuing to speak about leadership traits and uh, combined with ethical living and why ethics matters. We're continuing on the subject, um, as we said, uh, leadership traits. We taught a bit on that, and we said that uh, leadership traits are developed by God. God gives us the abilities to do um, what we can do, and, and we um, to God be the glory for what we are um, observing that many of us who didn't know very much when we came to know the Lord. Through the Holy Spirit, as we surrender our lives to him, God has helped us and has given us the traits, the abilities to do uh, uh, the work of ministry. So as we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, to bring about a deeper growth in faith, in his word, and in hope and love, we develop uh, these traits. Leadership skills are developed, though, by the individual who practices them. So um, as we receive the Lord and we begin to uh, have the call on our lives as to where we want to serve, we have to be uh, comfortable with what the Lord calls us to do, what we think that he has called us to do. And so we, we work at it. It's not that we're just going to get saved and uh, leave ourselves up and it will happen. You must work at it and you must be comfortable with what you are doing. And as I said earlier on, uh, others will confirm it that this is where uh, they, the Lord is calling you to serve. So leadership requires strong leaders. Leadership, and we're going to go into many areas of uh, ethics. Um, when I think of leaders, leaders has to be examples. Uh, sloppy life traits undermines our leadership as well as the people we lead. Uh, not only that, it hinders the effectiveness of the gospel of grace. Uh, the Apostle Paul told T Timothy, his protege, follow me as I follow Christ. And so as leaders, we must be able to lead by example. Uh, if Paul wasn't a, a, a leader that lead by example, he could never tell uh, the Apostle uh, Timothy to, to um, follow him. So one of the traits of effective leader uh, leadership is to lead by example. Your members, uh, the people you lead, should see that you're a good example or else it, 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 it won't work. Leaders are, are also called, uh, one of the many, sorry, one of the many uh, definitions of um, ethical leadership is a noble quality of leading by example. That's what it is leading by example. It is a form of leadership that demonstrates a conduct for the common good. One that is acceptable and appropriate in every area of our lives, or our walk. It is said that action speaks louder than words. So whatever we do, um, we are being um, 
noticed. We're being watched as leaders. And even if we lead a small group, it is important that we, we have to know that we lead by example. You know, uh, Jesus said, whatever I say, I could have said it on the, on the rooftop. We have to be able to be open, to be respectful, and we're going to go into uh, areas like that. But um, more than anything else, we must be able to lead uh, um, by example. So leaders and ethics are standards, are values, or principles, that and guidelines that Christian leaders should or must observe. Ethics is concerned with moral. Moral values are guidelines for one's conduct. An ethical person has a higher standard, and it's not surprising that God has asked us as leaders to have a higher standard. It's not just avoiding a certain behavior because somebody is watching but because it is the right thing to do. The Christian life is a life of integrity and the world is short of integrity, but our integrity goes with us. And when we look at the world today and where we are, it appears as if there's no right or wrong. Each has chosen his own path it seems like there is no guide or no accountability, accountability for our actions. It seems even among those who are named, the name of Christ uh, is, um, are not accountable sometimes in, in, in our, our midst. We see that. But the, the Bible said in 2 Timothy chapter uh, 2 and verse 19, uh, to 21, uh, Timothy says, um, or the Apostle Paul, that the foundation of God stands sure, and it has a seal, and God knows them that are his, and that those of us who name the name of Christ should depart from iniquity. We should be careful that we are leading others by the example of that Christ set for us. Uh, um, I have a quote that I would like to quote from Harvey Cox, and he says, we live in a post-America, uh, Christian America. The Judeo-Christian ethics are no longer guides, uh, no longer guides or social institutions. Christian ideas and values are no longer uh, uh, dominates social thoughts and action. The Bible has ceased to be a common base of moral authority for judging whether something is right or wrong, good or bad, acceptable or unacceptable. In other words, the world we live in, there is no moral compass. In many areas, we can see that. There's a scripture, there are a number of scriptures that I have that I would like to, um, to, to read uh, as we go along here. Um, I probably won't be able to read all, but uh, there's a few of them that really uh, stands out in my, um, in my mind this evening. So Titus chapter 2 and 1 to 15, but I'm not going to read the whole uh, a thing, uh, the whole passage, rather. Um, Titus 2, uh, verse 7, you can read the whole chapter when you have, get the time, but it says, and show your own self in all respects to be pattern and model of good deeds and works, teaching what is unadulterated, showing gravity, having the strictest regard for truth and purity of motive with dignity and seriousness and let your instruction be sound and fit and wise and wholesome, uh, uh, vigorous and irrefutable, 
and above censor, so that the oppose it, uh, opponent may be put to shame, finding nothing discrediting or evil to say about us. So the apostle is saying to us that uh, uh, we should walk in right paths. We should show ourselves a pattern or a model of uh, that which is truth. We should have regard for truth and purity. Our lifestyle should be lifestyle of purity and with dignity and seriousness. Seriousness about the things of God and as we teach others, our instruction should be sound uh, coming from God's word. And he went on to say in, chapter, in verse, the same second uh, Titus 2, and verse 11 says, For the grace of God is unmerited favor and blessing has come forward and has appeared for the deliverance from sin and the eternal salvation for all mankind. And it has trained us to reject and renounce all ungodliness, worldly, passionate desires, to live discreet, temperate, self-control, upright, devote, spiritually whole lives in this present world as we wait for the coming of our dear Savior. So according to Cox, he said that we are living in a post-Christian uh, America or North America and the Judeo-Christian ethics seems that it doesn't uh, longer, nobody um, thinks that the Bible is our, our guide in this age. We seem to think that we can do as we like and we, um, we are not accountable. But the scripture tells us that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all. And it teaches us how to live out our lives in this ungodly world. We have to be able to lead by example. Not in the world to come, but in this world we are now living in. The grace of God gives us the, um, the application where we can uh, live our lives, live a life of example, a life, a godly living life, a life of purity, a life of moral uh, uh, stability where others can see and um, um, patronize our faith. In St. Matthew chapter uh, 5 and some verse here, I would like to read a portion that Jesus uh, has, has spoken to us about. St. Matthew chapter 5 uh, and verse um, 13. And he said, you are, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, its, ten, its ten, strength, or its quality, how can it be salted? Or how can it be restored? It is not good for anything, but to be thrown out and trodden underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hid. Nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but under a lampstand, and it give light to all in the home. Uh, verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your moral excellence and your praiseworthy, noble, and good deeds and recognize and honor and praise and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The scripture is saying that we are the light, we are the salt of the earth, and our lives must, must uh, match up to who we represent. We represent Christ in this dark world. And amidst uh, the darkness, we shine as light as we lead people. Um, you know, we cannot tell them to live righteous lives, but we are living the opposite. 
there's another quote um, from Winston Churchill, and he said, the flame of Christian ethics, the flame of Christian ethics is still our highest guide. So Christian ethics are um, so much needed. And it is needed in the workplace. It is needed in our church life. It is needed everywhere that we uh, have to do with humankind in our world. And again, I have some, Christ, uh, some uh, scriptures that I'd like to uh, leave with you. I may not be able to read them tonight, but in another setting, we will, uh, you know, continue to, um, to make mention of them. So one of the scripture that we read um, is um, St. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13 and Titus. Um, 2 Peter 3 verse 13 to 17. And I'm mainly going to read uh, the scriptures uh, as a foundation so that we can understand the base of what uh, uh, the scripture is telling us. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 first. And it said, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation. God's own purchase, special people, that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfection of him, who has called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. Yes, we are called into uh, the, 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 the light through Christ himself. We are called to be an example to those that we lead. Once you were not a people at all, but now you are God's people once you were unpitied, but now you are pitied and have mercy. So uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, Peter, is telling us how we must live. As uh, verse 12 says that we should conduct ourselves properly or honorably or righteously among the Gentiles, so that though they may slander you as evildoers, you, uh, the life you live may be uh, a witness of your good deeds. And in the end, you are glorifying God who has called you. So our lives matters. Uh, 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 living godly uh, ethics Living a, a way of, of that pleases Christ is very important in a dark world. In the Christian uh, uh, walk, we must endeavor to live out the truth, as we said, as being lights. If we represent the light, uh, which is Christ, uh, and the Bible said, we are now the light. We are now the sons of God. The light in us as his followers will illuminate and give light to those we lead as well as those who do not know Christ. Another scripture I'd like to uh, leave with you is Colossians chapter 1 and verse 10 that encourage us that we should walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. We should walk to a higher standard of living. Walk worthy in the light of what Christ has done for us, in, in light of what he's, he has done for us in taking us out of darkness, we are a representative of Christ in a dark world. And so if we represent Christ in this dark world, uh, we should be able to walk in his grace and his glory. And in doing so, we are glorifying his wonderful name among uh, the heathen. So why does godly uh, ethics matter as we lead by example? Now, according to our lesson, um, I'd like to read something here from the lesson. And it talks about as leaders, 
He said there's a, a there's a there's a section here that I would like to read, and it says, as humans, we tend to build on our weaknesses, our mistakes when we sin. We are prone to take bigger and bigger steps away from God, and often without knowing it. The child who snatches one cookie, thinking it won't be noticed, will be tempted to take another. And these little slips can easily produce a pattern that governs our thinking. And it is followed by bigger slips and then finally a fall. We are no match for the enemy. And um, the scripture is there for us to, 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 to use as an, uh, our, our mandate or map or guide for Christian living and how we, we live our lives daily. Um, 1 Peter 3 verse 13 to 17 is another scripture that I'd like you to look into as we um, uh, continue this reading. You know, sometimes when we are afraid of what people will say when we begin to live our lives, uh, lives of examples. But the scripture said, it is better to suffer unduly for doing what is right. That if it should be God's will, than to suffer for doing the wrong thing. For Christ the Messiah himself died for our sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, the just for the unjust, the innocent for the, un for the uh, guilty, that he might bring us to God in his human body. He was put to death, but was made alive in the spirit. Verse 16 is saying, and see to it, that your conscience is entirely clear or unimpaired so that when you are falsely accused as evildoers, those who threaten you abusively revile your right behavior in Christ may come to be ashamed of slandering your good lives. So when we live, uh, uh, live truth and walk and, 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 and lead by example, it doesn't mean that people won't criticize us. It doesn't mean that uh, people won't say things about us. But the Bible said it's better to suffer for the good that we do uh, uh, more than suffer for evil. For at the end, when uh, others uh, criticize us or persecute us, the Bible said they'd be ashamed because of the examples that you have set and the lives that you have lived. So let us be careful about those small steps and those small slips. Because in the, uh, sometimes we, we, we don't realize that we're really slipping. Slipping in words, slipping in behavior, slipping in our consciences. And then we find ourselves... Uh, really no different from uh, our counterparts. So Peter said, we should not worry about suffering for that which is right, but we need to do the right thing. That's one of the things that we need to do, do the right thing. So Peter is saying that we should also sanctify, verse 17, and we're not going to read the whole whole ver old chapter, but that we should sanctify the Lord God in our hearts. Uh, and, and, and what a, what a, what a thought, uh, let the Holy spirit cause us the power of God to, to, to cleanse us and to mold us and, and to bring us to a place where we can live above reproach. One of the worst things is to bring reproach and the name of Christ. 
And Peter, you know, as we talk about that God used broken vessels, Peter was one of them who denied the Lord. But he was able to tell us in this chapter that we should sanctify the Lord God in our hearts. Uh, God will always uh, turn us around and give us the chance, the grace to, to make uh, uh, the necessary uh, choices that we, 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 you know, that will bring glory to his name. He said we should sanctify the Lord God in, God in our hearts. So we'll have an answer to give everyone. You know, the world today is looking for answers. They're looking for leaders that are, are people of God who is true to their words. We cannot serve two masters, said this scripture. So we are encouraged to, to uh, sanctify the Lord in our hearts so that when the unsaved ask us of the hope in us, we can give the right answer. We are encouraged this evening to submit ourselves to the Lord, to the Holy Spirit, sanctify our thoughts, sanctify our hearts, and submit to the wisdom of God and his holiness. God is still holy. The Bible tells us that we should holy be holy because he is holy. And so we need to submit ourselves to his holiness, to his lordship, and his purpose for our lives submit ourselves to the leading of his Holy Spirit in our walk, in our conversation, and in our lifestyle. And in there, no one can condemn us for living good lives um, and giving God the glory. May the Lord bless you tonight. We have to stop right here, but we thank you for being with us tonight. And I am trusting the Lord that we will continue to uh, share our faith, live out our lives, live out our lives among our peers, among our family members, among those that we work with. You know, we're not more special than anyone, but many times we are, we are the ones that they're watching and they want to know that if we are uh, leaders uh, and also the people of God, if we're leaders leading them, they need to see our example, and we need to lead by example. God bless you. Thank you again for joining us. I'm going to pray before we close this session. Father in heaven, we thank you tonight. We worship you, Lord. Father, you're a God of grace. You love us so much that you came. You sent your son to die, Lord, in our stead. And tonight, whatever we need for godliness, the Bible tells us that you have already given it to us and so as we walk with you lord help us to walk in faith to walk in truth to walk in your lightness you declare jesus in your word that you are the we are the light of the world a city set up on a hill that cannot be hid and may our hearts this evening be touched lord as we walk with you we'll walk in faith we'll walk in love we'll walk lord in reverence and our lives will bring glory and honor to your precious name Bless your people, we pray. Bless the leadership of our church, O oh God, and every other church. Let us shine as lights among a dark world. Lord, this world is looking for people with light, that bear light, the light of Christ to follow. And so, Lord, may you help us to be an example to them. We thank you tonight and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, and I would like to ask you to read all the scriptures that I have left with you, and then when we come back next time, uh, we will begin where we left off. God bless you, and thank you so much. Continue to pray for us. I know we are still behind closed door, but God is doing a great thing, and he's saving thousands upon thousands, and may we work together in one to glorify the Lord's name on earth. We bless you. Thank you.